Who invented calculus? Well, the answer to this question depends on who you ask. A German or an Englishman? Since two of the most famous scientists of their respective nations are in question. One is Isaac Newton, 1642 to 1726, and the other is Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz, 1646 to 1716. Although nowadays, the notation of Leibniz is used. Newton was without doubt a genius and is best known for the mathematical principles of natural philosophy. He also developed the reflecting telescope named after him and used a prism to separate white light into its spectral colours. The Principia contained, among other things, Newton's gravitational constant named after him, which can be used to calculate the force of gravity, the orbital period of a planet and the three Newtonian axioms. Lesser known is his argumentativeness. Newton quarrelled with many of his contemporaries. He also had a dispute with John Flamsteed, 1646 to 1719, the director of the Royal Observatory in Greenwich, which ended in court. Newton lost and retaliated by removing any reference to Flamsteed from his Principia work, which was first published in 1687. Newton owed much to Flamsteed's careful observations even though Flamsteed is considered unlucky in the history of science because he misinterpreted two major discoveries. Flamsteed observed the planet Uranus before its real discovery, but he thought it was a star. Also, he saw the supernova in the Milky Way in the year 1680, but also registered this as just a star in his catalogues. Newton was a man of extremes tending to extreme views and not handling criticism or contradiction well. Since he was active in many fields, Newton also devoted himself to religion for a time, and here he held the view that the Holy Trinity was heresy. Furthermore, as a mint master, he ensured a crackdown on coin counterfeiters, and as an alchemist, he was on a quest for the mythical Philosopher's Stone, an elixir that could be used to create precious metals such as gold from base metals. Since Newton went through several internal crises during his lifetime, and his behaviour and letters to fellow researchers give him anything but a stable impression, it is still debated today whether Newton contracted heavy metal poisoning during his numerous experiments or even suffered from a mental disorder. Nevertheless, he held the office as president of the Royal Society until his death and was re-elected 25 times and knighted by Queen Anne in 1705, the first scientist to be knighted. Leibniz, on the other hand, is considered a polymath and was one of the most important philosophers, whose abilities impressed even other contemporaries, such as Christian Huygens, who was a kind of mentor for him. Leibniz was concerned with enlightenment and harmony, and he cultivated exchanges with scholars all over the world, which is why he was always active as a diplomat in between. He not only developed numerous mathematical methods, but also invented practical things because he wanted to help people, such as a horizontal mill for mine drainage, door locks, a submarine boat, and numerous suggestions for improving mining. Especially noteworthy is the design plan for a mechanical calculating machine that was far ahead of its time and could perform all four basic arithmetic operations. Later, he even thought about a binary calculating machine that would work with zeros and ones and is thus considered one of the first pioneers of the computer. He turned down an offered professorship at the University of Altdorf. However, he supported the foundation of the Prussian Academy of Sciences of which he became the first president. Who developed calculus? According to today's knowledge, both Leibniz and Newton developed it independently, drawing on the preliminary work of numerous other scientists. But a major dispute arose in 1691. The dispute was about who was the first to develop calculus. Although Newton had written a letter to Leibniz before, in which he said that friendships were more important to him than all mathematical inventions. Several other scientists interfered in the dispute and Leibniz asked the Royal Society, of which he was a foreign member, for arbitration. This was a serious mistake in that Newton was the president of that organisation and the arbitration committee was staffed by impartial friends of Newton. 
since even the final report of the committee was written by Newton himself, Leibniz now had the problem of being officially branded as a plagiarist. And it did not help that he deposited his work with the French Academy of Sciences as early as 1675, several years earlier than Newton. But even when Leibniz died in 1716, the controversy was not over for Newton, and he replaced his earlier text that had previously praised Leibniz's achievements with another in his third edition in 1726 of his major work, Philosophia Naturalis Principia Mathematica.